everybody. So you want to sell the stuff you make on Etsy. Here's what you need to know about that. So you've made all this stuff, you have enough that you feel you can open a store. What do you do with it? Well, you want to go on Etsy, right? Everybody goes on Etsy. Well, eh, that's the problem. Everybody goes on Etsy. But if you want to be able to sell on Etsy, here's what you need to know. First, actually starting your Etsy store is such a small part of everything you need to do. Marketing for online sales is the key to making anything happen. And it doesn't matter if you're actually selling online, if you're selling in person, you need to get the word out of what you're doing and find your target market. Now, I should stop and back up real quick and let you know something. I have my MBA in marketing from Leavenworth, Kansas, um, University of St. Mary's. I also have a bachelor's in entrepreneurship and marketing and I even have my own Etsy shop. By the way, it's linked down below at www.etsy.com slash shop slash Phoenix Gates Crafts. You should totally go there and buy something. But anyway, in order to sell on anything that you ever want to do, you actually the actual selling part is such a small portion of what you need to do. 90% of what you need to do is actually the marketing and linking your Etsy shop to everything online. And this is why it is so hard to sell on Etsy. Because if you're expecting people to just go on Etsy, say they want a blanket and type in blanket, I did that literally thousands of blankets popped up and I was just trying to figure out a price to set my stuff at and they ranged from $10 to $600 there are even a few thousand dollar blankets on there and I don't know what those thousand dollar blankets were I'm willing to bet they didn't sell very well I also don't think the $10 blanket sold very well. I'm willing to bet a lot of people have a lot of inventory that just sits in their houses because the market on Etsy is so saturated that you have to do something to make yourself stand out. So we all hear the stories about somebody who's making a killing on Etsy. And let me tell you, that person is like the Steve Jobs in Apple. They somehow got there at the perfect time for what they needed to do. They did something remarkable that just drew the people to them and they probably lucked out in some kind of an advertising scheme that got them attention. That doesn't happen 99% of the time. 99% of the time when you drop out of high school, you just drop out and work at McDonald's. You don't, you're not lucky enough to become Steve Jobs. So that happens on Etsy. But if you want to sell on Etsy, some people do make a really good living, but they do make it their full-time job. So you start your Etsy shop, you get your beautiful pictures, you make sure everything looks professional and neat. You edit your photos, you make sure that you've got that banner that definitely looks like you and your pretty face with your fancy hat and whatnot. All of that Etsy will actually guide you through. What do you do after that? Well, you need to set up a Facebook account and you need to link your Facebook and your Instagram. You should also start a Twitter account and you need to start a blog. Why do you need to do these four things? Because this is the joy of online marketing and content marketing. So you don't just get to sell stuff, you have to sell an image. Think about other companies. Um, Apple has an image of prestige. They don't actually cost more for the company to make, but between their prices, their timing and the product life cycle, and the fact that they target first movers, Apple has this image of being a very user-friendly and 
and very wonderful set of devices when in reality they're not technically any better or worse it's just a judgment call on what's better or worse than anybody else's it's more the image they have than the actual quality of the technology if that makes any sense so you need to do something like that using your online forums so Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter are the three social media outlets you need to be engaged in. And by being engaged in, I'm not just talking about posting your items and their prices and doing just the ads. You need to show your own personality. You're selling yourself as much as you're selling your items that you sell. And by doing that, you can slowly gain a following. Um, I know expressionfiberarts.com which is the lovely Shandy on, um, on YouTube, and I'll put a link to her uh, YouTube channel. She actually has a video on selling on Etsy, and one of the things she says is don't judge yourself too harshly if you, nothing happens in the first year. Her first entire year of selling online, she sold one $22 skein of yarn, and that's all the money she made. But I follow her now, and I have made purchases from her, so I know she's doing better, but this stuff takes time. And you really need to utilize your network. If you've got that one friend who's got the huge network and she doesn't mind pushing along your stuff, make sure every time you post something on your business's Facebook page, make sure you also share it on your personal page and tag it, that friend. So that way, not only your friend sees it, but all of their friends sees it as well. And by utilizing your friends and making new friends and getting more followers and more likes and maybe doing a few special events. If this post is shared by 100 people, uh, you can win something or if somebody takes a picture of your stuff, make sure you get permission to share it on your page. This is called user generated material and it's wonderful and it helps build your community because what's social media for? Being social, having a community and not utilizing that. Even if you've just got this small personal community, eventually you can build it and then you can also use advertising. Um, if you advertise on Facebook, it automatically also can go into Instagram. You can target your market to specific types of people with specific interests who'd be interested in your stuff. And you can um, basically for $5 a week, you can reach up to several thousand people. And it's really kind of a magical number game. It's the law of big numbers. So as long as you keep at it, utilize your online resources adequately, come up with a schedule for your advertising, you can actually reach more people with your Etsy. And make sure that every time you share something, somebody can get to your shop and click buy on your item within three clicks. That's key. Also, the reason I recommend a blog is because if you have something to say, that's the perfect form. You can make announcements. You can have it as your newsletter. You can um, post pictures, talk about problems, this, that, anything you want to. Um, it's a wonderful forum and it gets a different group of people following it than you'll have on social media. So you want to be able to diversify and get more people. Now, this is all pretty basic stuff and it's not even a complete picture. It is very simple. I'll probably wind up doing another video at some point going into more detail on how to do each one of these individual things. But understanding that if you're not doing well on Etsy, you need to give it time 
and realize the market is saturated and it's really hard to find a diamond in the rough such as your shop. And thirdly, online is not the best place to sell tangible goods that are unique like the items you make. Yes, you can sell them on Facebook. Yes, you can sell them on Craigslist and lots of other websites as well as Etsy. But the way that I've always been able to get people to buy my stuff is to say, here, look at this. Look at this doily. Isn't this cool? Hey, look, this is a hat. It was originally supposed to be a messy bud hat, but since I have no hair, I made a little flower. Hey, isn't that cool? And it looks good on me. And slightly crooked. I mean, yeah. Anyway, but the, the time that people see the value in why you charge $50 for this doily, somebody understands the concept of, oh, there's this blanket. Why isn't she selling it for $10? I can go to Walmart. Well, you have that interaction. You have the ability to touch the blanket. You have the ability to say, yeah, you know, this blanket took me about 100 hours to make and the materials cost me $50. I think $300 is a fair price for it, especially considering how intricate it is. You know, so you have the ability that in-person experience with these kinds of things is really best. So if you really want to sell your items, uh, trade shows are good, um, farmers markets, those kinds of things are really the best place for it. You can also hand out your cards at places like this and have your Etsy shop and so your Etsy can be part of your selling plan. I think Etsy fits better as a part of a selling plan than being the selling plan. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. I realize you probably have a lot of questions. Leave them in the comments down below. And don't forget to like this video if you like it. Um, subscribe and hit the bell notification because this is a topic I'm going to revisit in the future. All right. Have a wonderful week. Happy crafting. Bye.